One day, near the end of our brainstorming sessions, Blower cleared his voice and stood up. We all fell silent and looked at him, like we normally did. He stood up and said, Gentlemen and females, I have an idea. I remember what he did. He paused and looked right at me as he said, This story will revolve around the legend of a pair of Siamese twins. Have you ever heard of the Donner Party? Everyone nodded except for me. I didn't like where this conversation was going. They ate themselves when they got cold. They ate each other. Everyone nodded. I closed my eyes. What would Siamese twins do if they had nothing to eat? Would one wait until the other twin dies, then consume her own sister's flesh? Would they claw out each other's eyes until one of them died, then dine upon them like a vulture tearing at the skin of a dead deer? I do not know. It is interesting indeed. I didn't know what the fuck I was hearing. I opened my eyes and looked around the room. No one was fucking moving. Everyone's eyes were on Laura except for mine and when I looked at him, he was still staring at me. You have no idea how much I wanted this to be my intro when I first saw the Ivy trailer. Anyways, hello everyone, Jester Geo here and welcome back to the channel. As you all know, a whole lot of new content was dropped onto us at Records Pace. There's the stupid ass Joker skin they're releasing for April Fools that you can earn via the popularity system right now. Junji Ito is returning alongside the Truth and Inference anniversary event coming up soon. Rank has also gotten spiced up, with Warp now being added into Rank and Darkwoods getting area selection in Customs. So we might be getting Darkwoods as our next Rank map, which I've seen various apprehension towards. That's a topic for another video, however, the main point of interest is the fact that Ivy has now been added to the game. Ivy released to the game with some divide, however the common opinion is that Ivy is broken and is probably on opera singer tier of good. Now, I did decide to play a bit of Ivy and, I'll admit, I didn't perform very well as her at all. However, if you think that means that Ivy is a terrible hunter, then you are out of your mind. While Ivy has some flaws, I do think she has many more strengths that outweigh those flaws if you're adept to them and can be a very oppressive hunter to face against a survivors. However, I'm getting off topic, let's start at the beginning and go over her abilities before we really dive into her strengths and weaknesses. While I already talked about Ivy and what she can do in a separate video, I do understand that people might want me to explain it again here. However, I really implore you to check these videos out moving forward if you want to learn the core abilities of any newly released characters. That being said, I do get that people don't want to leave to check that video out, so I'll just breeze past what I said before showing the changes. Literally. Now that we got that covered, let's go over all the changes they made to Ivy. I won't go over all the changes since I do really want to talk about all the good and bad she has. I will talk about the most important changes in each of these change logs, though. 
Ivy received two sets of changes, all of them being nerfs, shocker. The first extremely important change they did was make it so the leech cooldown does not refresh if a survivor is down. This is a huge change as it makes it so Ivy cannot instantly leech the chaired survivor, setting up a Dorito and revealing everyone. If she unleeches really early, then maybe she will still be able to leech them again. However, more often than not, she will need to send Yeek out to leech a survivor on the map in order to abuse her wall hacks. This could be seen as a buff, however, since the Doritos can't be dealt with immediately and you are still affected by corruption even outside of her terror radius. Speaking of the Doritos, those got nerfed too. Their numbers on the field got reduced from 6 to 5, their inability to be broken dropped to 30 seconds instead of 40, and their breaking speed is faster. They also nerfed the screen's detection radius twice, so it'll be harder to hit your screens on survivors. Characters who can remove their detection, like Magician and First Officer, now remove Yeek from them when they use their items. Leeching and various other cooldowns got nerfed so she can't abuse them like she could before. They further nerfed her chair camping by making it 0.6 time faster, or 40% slower, in a 32 meter range. And, finally, Little Girl is, once again, the biggest leech in this game since she is only affected by Matt's corruption. There's a bit more changes they did, but that's pretty much the important changes they've made to Ivy. I will say that I am happy Nettie's is taking extra attention to actually balance this hunter after the nightmare that is Opera Singer. Do I think these changes will make her a lot more balanced and not a nightmare to face? Maybe, I don't know, we need to see more before we can judge. For now, at least they are listening and trying their hardest to balance her out. With that said, I don't think these changes take away from the fact that Ivy is still a very strong hunter to play as. Why? Well, let's move on from here and see what makes her so strong. Being one of the newest technical hunters in the game, Ivy has a lot of risk and reward to her gameplay. These technical hunters get their reputation from being a lot harder to get into compared to the other hunters, but can be really rewarding if played well. The best example of a technical hunter who is difficult and strong is Mad Eyes, who has zero chase power, but so much map presence. And while Ivy is nowhere near as difficult as Mad Eyes, she can be a difficult character to pick up. That said, there's a lot in Ivy's kit that makes her a really strong hunter, the first being those aforementioned Doritos. These Doritos, when enough is placed, grants her an insane amount of map mobility and map control, allowing her to teleport around the map at record pace. What makes these Doritos even better is the fact that, rather than all teleports receiving one unified cooldown, they all have their own separate cooldowns. This means that you can immediately teleport from one Dorito to another at record pace. Setting up these Doritos aren't as hard too, since all four survivors each have their own independent leech cooldowns. Now, is it a good idea to do nothing but set up Doritos early game? Absolutely not, however, it is very easy to set a web of them down and have pressure around the map. Another good thing these Doritos provide is helping out Ivy's camp. If your chaired survivor can be leeched, you can set up both a Dorito and your wall hacks. These wall hacks basically act like wanted order but better because the entire team is revealed to you. You can see which survivor is coming to rescue and where they're going and who is staying behind. Doing this also causes a Dorito to spawn, so you are free to leave the chair in case the team tries to sell that survivor. This will force the team to come in to rescue, which you can then go back to intercept the rescue. On top of all of this, the Doritos corruption range can help you either stuff rescues or guarantee double downs due to the rescuer receiving corruption. So despite all of the countermeasures to make her camping weaker, it's still pretty strong. This is also ignoring the fact that you can read things when leached onto a survivor, which can be really helpful in determining cipher progress and where it's coming from. Doritos can also help with contesting ciphers, since you can leech a survivor on a cipher and that Dorito cannot be broken until 30 seconds pass. This forces the survivor to either leave and do another cipher or power through the cipher while suffering many stuns. There are just so much strengths to eat in its Doritos that I can't help but praise how good it is. It's why I feel she can be a very oppressive force if you are adept enough to playing complicated hunters. 
While her weakest aspect is her chase, it still isn't that awful. While in chase, survivors lose out on their biggest tools when it comes to chases, visuals on the hunter. Looking at Ivy will cause corruption to build up, which will eventually end with you being stunned. This has a ripple effect of making certain survivors who need to look at the hunter's face much harder. Seer, novelist, and painter will struggle to get their powers since you gain corruption from seeing her face. On top of that, Yeet can be used to help Ivy stun those survivors or cancel their items with Scream. This Scream is especially good on distance pulling survivors like Patient and Toy Merchant alongside harassers like Forward or Batter. However, I think the thing that makes Ivy so good is the fact that she has a lot of this stuff at base kit. The presence abilities only really buffs up her kit and nothing else. At the start of the match, you have all the tools you need to be successful in your matches, which cannot be said with a lot of the Hunter cast. That said, just because she can be very overwhelming doesn't mean she is unbeatable. While I do think she is up there in terms of top tier Hunter, there are flaws with Ivy that hold her back. So let's talk about those flaws with Ivy, shall we? If you were to ask me who was the best hunter to ban for rank out of Opera Singer or Ivy, I think I would still say Opera Singer is the stronger ban. Opera Singer might be weaker with the buffs, but I feel her weaknesses nowhere near hinders her as much as Ivy's. To start off, Ivy's chase, while not awful, is still not the greatest in the game. Ivy's power relies on the survivor to look at her in order to build up corruption, which can be avoided by simply not looking at her. Some people might argue this is a really bad thing to lose, but it's really not that bad against Ivy. The reason it is so important to look at most of the hunters in this game is because they have skills and abilities that can be deadly if you aren't paying attention. Because the only threat to Ivy is corruption generation, it's completely fine to not look at her and to focus on your kite. In fact, this aspect of Ivy might hurt her even more as players will be less likely to bump into terrain from paying too much attention on Ivy. What can also help survivors who are kiting against her is the survivor talent cold. Cold gives you a notification anytime the hunter is looking directly at you, so running it can help you keep some information on Ivy. You also can't necessarily ambush the team as well since Ivy lets out an audio cue anytime she summons Yeek to go out. Another reason why Opera Singer will just be the better band compared to Ivy is simply because of the survivor coverage. While Ivy can deal with survivors who need to look at her face, such as Novelist and Thief, she doesn't really have much she can do against everyone else. What makes Opera Singer such an oppressive hunter for top tier play is the fact that most of the meta survivors cannot deal with her as effectively. Characters like Mercenary or Aeroplanist have transitioning based abilities, most of which Opera Singer can catch up to with relative ease. Compare that to Ivy, who has no transitioning tools and a very weak tight kiting tools. This gives survivors free reign to kite how they please before using their items if they feel they're in danger. Another complaint I have with Ivy that's mostly a skill issue thing is the fact that Ivy seems really clunky to play as. Unlike Mechanics Bot or Dream Witch's Leech, Yeek and Ivy's camera are shared between the two characters. This can make playing as the both of them really disorienting, especially when you have Yeek facing away from where you want to see and then swap back to Ivy. The Scream ability of Ivy and Corruption Generation in general is also hit or miss, since you need both Yeek and Ivy's face to be exposed to generate corruption. Skill issue thing, I know, but I can see players who aren't adapted to her. Ping is unfortunately another issue Ivy will suffer from when playing as her. At least on other hunters, having yellow ping is still functional, even if very icky to play on. Both Yeek and Ivy cannot afford to have anything but green ping because their movement is tied to their pings. If your ping is yellow, Ivy and Yeek will move much slower, even if you aren't controlling them. You may have noticed that, other than the survivors, a lot of the issues Ivy have are mostly skill issues or outside factors. This is because Ivy is the hunter who spawns in with the tools necessary to be successful. However, if you aren't able to use those tools well, you will struggle to find success with her. It's sorta why I can't play her as well, since I rarely play a lot of the complicated hunters in this game. In fact, if I were to compare Ivy to any hunter, it would be Clerk. 
With all that said, I still think she is a very strong hunter once you really get the ball rolling and are able to snowball well. So, let's get on to, to some potential tips and builds you could use to help your Ivy matches. Despite Ivy's chase being not that great, I don't think confined space is the best talent to run on her. There are certain maps where bringing it is an option, but I feel her tools are enough for you not to bring it. Rather, I think the standard trump card detention build is the best to bring on Ivy. Granted, I was using the recommended builds that the pros run, but I still think this build provides you a lot. If this build isn't up to your style, all you need to know is that trump card and detention are important. You can spend your optional points on whatever. In terms of beginning traits, Blink is still by far the best option to run. With Ivy's containment being awful, having a way to quickly down someone is important to have. Warp can also be used as a good alternative if you are dealing with distance pulling survivors and need to catch up. Other than those two, I can't really recommend any other trait, as Ivy doesn't have the tools early game to deal with the survivors. For your trait change, you can decide between Teleport or Warp, since these two paired with Ivy's Doritos can provide a lot of coverage. In terms of general tips, it might not be a bad idea to send Ivy out while finding your first chase. Doing so might cause Ivy to run into a survivor, who might not be so keen on decoding at the risk of her being around. And once you find a suitable target, you can change back to Ivy and teleport to that survivor. If you want to generate corruption, remember that the faces of Ivy and Yeek need to be shown when building it up. Also remember that the survivor's camera must be facing you to build it up, not where their character is facing. When screaming as Yeek, he will always scream towards the center of wherever your camera is facing. Being inside the survivor also helps as long as your face is towards the survivor you're trying to scream at. Finally, when Yeek is leeched onto a survivor, you can hold down the scream button to choose where Yeek screams at. So, if you're having trouble with landing your screams, I hope this helps. When you are chairing someone, make sure to leech onto a survivor on the map if you can't leech the chaired survivor yet. Having your wall hacks is crucial for determining whether it's fine to leave the chair or to potentially intercept the rescue. If you can, however, place a Dorito on the chaired survivor in order to help your camp. Whenever you're preparing to teleport, the game tells you which Dorito you will teleport to by highlighting it red. This can help prevent you from teleporting to the wrong Dorito, so be sure to hold down your ability. Double downs are critical as Ivy since it's very easy to keep track of both survivors with Ivy's kit. If you can, chair people in basement when the opportunity arises and place a Dorito on the top floor when the rescuer comes. Ivy is a very deadly camper and trying to escape the basement is next to impossible without a survivor like Priestess. Sending out Yeek to leech random survivors during the downtime isn't a horrible idea, either. If a survivor is next to a cipher, that cipher will be locked up until the Dorito can be destroyed, so it isn't a bad idea to do so. Spawning Doritos in areas near exit gates is also a good idea to help strengthen your endgame. If you're trying to find a certain survivor and have a slug, leeching that slug will cause every survivor to be highlighted. This can be extremely useful during the end game or if a survivor is trying to get dungeon, so keep that in mind. Finally, there are two general rules of thumb you should take note of. First, be sure to play on green ping as to not be hindered too badly. And second, be prepared to work hard in order to be successful with her. Ivy is a very complicated hunter and you won't find much success with her if you aren't adept to playing complicated hunters like her. However, I really recommend you stick around and try and get better with her. She can be very worth it if you know how to use her properly, so just keep it it and good luck doing so. I hope your ventures are both fun and prosperous with her.
And with that, I think that's all my thoughts on Ivy and everything to do with her kit. In terms of whether she's the next best hunter in the game, I think Opera Singer will hold onto her crown for now. However, that does not mean Ivy should be underestimated. Ivy has the tools to completely decimate a team and I'm sure we'll get to see her full potential as time goes on. All in all, a really good hunter design that I cannot wait to follow, although I'm definitely not gonna play her. That about does it for me, I hope you found this video really useful. The next discussion video will be on a survivor I mocked in the past, so I hope you tune in for that. Until then, however, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.